Hey friends, it's Monica and let's talk about my most disappointing books of 2023. So for this video, I have four disappointing books I wanted to talk about and I'm going to toss in my DNFs in here if you don't know what that those are. They are the books I did not finish. Also, a quick note, there is no intention to hate on any of these authors or books. It's just my thoughts and opinions on what was my experience with reading these books, but no hard feelings. Anyways, let's just get to the first one. The first book I wanted to talk about is a sequel to a popular romance and it is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. So this one is a sequel to Fourth Wing and this is all and anything that anyone is talking about this year. This is an adult fantasy about a college for dragon riders. We follow 20 year old Violet Soriniel and she is entering into this college. There is a fierce competition to bond with the dragon but that in itself is very deadly and it doesn't help that Violet is actually the daughter of the general painting a large target on her back especially for wing leader Zayden. Okay so I was really anticipating the sequel and First getting into it, it was what I expected from a fantasy and romance. But the thing that really bothered me throughout the entire book was the YA writing style. I'm not sure why it sticks out so much to me in this particular installment. I think in Fourth Wing, I kind of let it slide because it was a first book, but it just really stuck out to me, especially during the romantic scenes. However, the best part of the writing was the world building for me with the political schemes, the action, and the dragons. The dragons are still my favorite part of this series so far and um, I have decided that I will not be continuing on with the fourth wing series. I just think that there are other books out there that I might find more enjoyment while I'm reading them. Also, another tidbit about why this book disappointed me was that I didn't really care much for the characters except for Violet and even with the love interest I was like okay things are happening but I didn't really have a huge connection to the love interest even with the side characters. The only person I was rooting for was Violet so maybe that also says something. <laughs> Although I did have a lot of fun reading this book but I decided that I'm not going to be continuing on with uh, this fourth wing series. Next on my list is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is about a magical circus that appears overnight and we follow two main characters that are in a fierce magical competition. But the twist is, is these two are in love with each other so things can get a little bit sticky here. Right off the bat, this book comes off as very whimsical and very descriptive in its writing and it has a unique format as well with um, us following Celia and Marco, our protagonists, throughout their youth to their adulthood and them joining the circus. My biggest thing with this book is that although the circus is beautifully described and written in this book, I felt like the circus itself became a character as a setting and it sometimes overshadowed the characters and the plot itself. Although the title of this book being The Night Circus, it would be expected that it is about the circus and all of that, but I think the mysteries surrounding the circus really did overshadow this so-called competition that was supposed to take place. With the time comes, I really liked how it showed the characters' backgrounds and we learned of where they came from. It really did end up resulting in a disjointed plot and also the pacing also threw off that disjointedness even more. Although I really did like how this book shows the harsh realities of how humans and their strive for power and control especially when they have magic and the severe consequences of that. Next up is a last book of a YA fantasy series and this is Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is the final and third book in the Last Hours trilogy and I think it's like the fourth main series in the Shadowhunters saga. For this trilogy, we are set in the early 1900s, Edwardian London, and we're following a new group of Shadowhunters who are actually the children of previous Shadowhunters in, in an earlier series but not to say who or what because it kind of spoils that trilogy. Chain of Thorns was a decent finale although there was a lot of conversations happening and not a lot of action that took up a good majority of this book and I think that's where I got a little bit disappointed because 
I was expecting more of a explosive finale that I have come to associate with Cassandra Clare's final books. I did really like how we still got more resolution to the characters and their storylines as well. Although the plot was a little bit dragging in the beginning with all of those long conversations, we did finally get some action in the latter half of this book. But I feel like overall this book kind of gave off like a third book syndrome. You know how there's like second book syndrome, this gave off like third book syndrome. Then the last disappointing book that I wanted to talk about was The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is an adult contemporary romance. This one is about Kala who is a city girl and she is visiting Alaska to see her dying and estranged father. As it goes in any typical romance, we meet our love interest who is Jonah and Jonah is a pilot in Kala's father's airliner company. Things take off when Kala and Jonah meet in Alaska and they have huge chemistry and a lot of hate love type of relationship off the bat. This would sound really good to me usually but the shortcoming in The Simple Wild was the love interest Jonah and namely because of his comments, him picking at Kala too much when they first meet and him making a lot of big assumptions about her. Although Kala does make assumptions as well, I think Jonah voices those assumptions in a quite rude manner. Some of these comments were about her appearance and even her dairy allergy. So their romance does kick off. There are some mild spicy scenes but mm, it wasn't all too compelling for me. So that is where I got really disappointed in this book. Although the best part of this book for me was Kala and her repairing her relationship with her father so that was very sweet and endearing. But I didn't like how her father didn't actually reach out to contact her before this visit and it just ends up with Kala and Jonah's own romance story kind of re repeating history of Kala's parents. Overall, there were things in this book that didn't work for me and it's okay that it didn't because not all books are five-star reads. Then moving on to my DNFs that I had this year. First off, right in the beginning of 2023, literally the first book I picked up was The Secret History by Donna Tartt and I ended up DNFing it. I made it around like 50 pages in. This is a dark academia book following a group of eccentric young college students and they're trying to solve a murder. For this one, I couldn't get past the unlikable characters in, in dark academia. There's so many unlikable characters that seems to be a trend in those type of books and when i got to like page 50 i felt like there was nothing going on in the plot we found like a dead body but the insufferable characters were too much for me so i ended up dnfing it and i mentioned this in previous videos about dark academia books that i need more of a blend of a lot of heavy fantasy themes in a dark academia setting for me to actually enjoy dark academia books <laughs> then i picked up witch king by martha wells and i did end up dnfing this one around like 15 percent of the way in this book follows Kai who is a demon from the underworld and he mysteriously is awoken again and what he finds out is that someone is trying to steal his magic from his dead body but really he's not actually dead because now he's waking up from this supposed death and a deep slumber and Kai he's on the hunt of why someone would want to steal his magic and also to figure out what the heck happened to him? This type of fantasy is very very slow burn and it tosses you right into the action of it and usually I would be very intrigued but I think when I picked this book up I wasn't in the right mindset to read like a heavy fantasy so I think that was just like me and my reading mood at that time. I think for a fantasy book like The Witch King, you really do need to pay attention to all the unfamiliar words and character names just to figure out what is going on. And I really couldn't focus on all of that at that time. So I probably will pick up The Witch King later on in the future. But anyways, those were all the books that I thought that were the most disappointing for me in 2023. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.